Hello everyone, welcome back to A4 Analysis. Here we talk about different machine learning projects and how to implement them in Python. Today we have a very interesting case study where we will detect skin cancer using convolutional neural network. And you might also see that this is our first deep learning project. Now let's jump into the problem statement. So here in this assignment, you will build a multi-class classification model using CNN. And it will be a custom CNN. You would not use any transfer learning methods. So here we have 2,357 images of malignant and benign oncological diseases. And we'll feed this data, we'll feed these images to our convolutional neural network and it would be able to detect or predict nine different types of skin cancer. So basically, when we go to a doctor with a skin problem, it may take a huge amount of time to go through all the tests and all the things to basically detect skin cancer. But with the help of convolutional neural network or any machine learning technology, this process can be made much more faster. And as you can see that 70% of the skin cancer deaths are happening because of melanoma. So it's very important to detect them at the right stage, which is at a very early stage. And machine learning can help doctors to do that. So here is the data set available if you want to try it along with me. Let's check out the code now. So for this assignment, I was actually given some instructions. So I had to follow those instructions. If you want to try it by yourself, you can definitely try in different ways as you go along. First, I have imported all the models which will be required. As you can see here, we have used TensorFlow, Keras for our neural network part. So first of all, here are our train and test data, which is basically a bunch of pictures, bunch of images of skin, some marks on skin, basically. So as you can see here, we have around 2,200 images for training and 118 images for testing. So we have images, but we cannot use these images directly. We have to create a data set out of that images. So here we are doing that using Keras.preprocessing.image dataset from directory. So we are giving the directory location and it will generate the data set. Same we are doing for validation data as well. Here we are checking out all the directory names basically, which means these are the labels. Next, we'll check out the images. Uh, so this is a warning. If you don't want to look at this image, uh, you might skip this part, skip probably 30 seconds or so. So I'll show the images of the skin cancer here. So next part is creating the model. Here I have created a very basic convolutional neural network. As you can see here, I have used three conf2d layers and that's it. And all the activation functions are ReLU here. I have compiled the model, checking out the model summary here. And epochs, I have used 20, but if you have more computational resource, you can definitely try it out. I mean, it's not necessary that with more epochs, every time you'll get better results, but you can definitely give it a try. For me, I just did it entirely on Google Colab, so you can understand my situation. 
Next, we are checking out the training results. So the blue one is training accuracy on the left and orange line is validation accuracy. So as you can see that the training accuracy has improved a lot. But when you look at the validation accuracy, which is we should be more concerned about, hasn't improved much beyond 0.55. So we can see that the model is overfitting and it's not able to generalize very well. Similarly, if you look at the loss, the training loss is reducing monotonically, but the validation loss after a point has started to increase instead of decreasing. So this is not a good sign. Probably we have to try a few other ways, few other models. So how do we over how do we overcome the problem of overfitting? So one of the things we can do here is data augmentation. Basically, we have very little data, and that is why when we are trying with convolutional neural network. It's just remembering everything. That's why it's overfitting. It's performing so well on the training data and it's performing very poorly on unseen data, which is validation data in our case. So what we will do with data augmentation is basically we'll create few more uh, variations of the data which we are given with so that our so that our model has few more images or few more data sets to train on and it will train a little bit better. So for data augmentation purpose, we have used the layers dot experimental dot preprocessing. Here we have used horizontal random flip. We also used random rotation, which will just uh, rotate the original images a little bit, just by a little bit. And we also used random zoom. So these are the variations we have used for data augmentation. Basically, it will create some new images and from those new data sets will be created which so basically we'll have more data to train our model on. Next is we are using the same model again and we are compiling and training and we'll look at the visualization now. And as you can see, even though our validation uh, and test, sorry, our training and validation accuracy are not very good, but as you can see, at least they are not overfitting. I mean, it's not like training accuracy is very good and validation accuracy is very poor. At least both are in the same line, as you can see. Both are going in the same direction at least. And both are decreasing or increasing at the same time. As you can see here, both are overall they are increasing in accuracy and decreasing for loss. So we still have to do a few more things because accuracy is not very good. We have just 0.6 training accuracy and for validation it's even less. So next thing we would try is we would check how well the data has been represented or, or in other words if the data is well balanced or not. So these are the levels for which we have the input data available with us and as you can see for the last two levels I am not sure how to pronounce them right uh, but for the last two levels you can see that the data is quite less than all the other so this might mean that the model is seeing very less information about these two last levels and it might not be very efficient while uh, when it comes to predicting these last two levels. So we also checked from pers percentage perspective. So the first level, as you can see, among all the input data, 20% is represented 
for first level is represented by 20% of the input data, whereas the last level has only 3% rep representation, so which is not basically very good for the model to predict every level correctly. So one of the way we can mitigate this is we have to generate some more samples so that we have more input data, more data sets to train our model. So for this purpose, we are using Augmentator. Augmentor, sorry, Augmentor. So Augmentor will basically create new images or new data sets. Here for this particular uh, case study, I was asked to use this particular way or where we have added 500 images per level. But a more effective way would be to add more images for the level which has less representation so that at the end of applying augmenter we have almost equal amount of representation for all the levels so here is uh, the solution look uh, here the solution is looking a little bit less optimized definitely you can try it on your own and you can change it so here i have added 500 images for each of them so the last one had only 77 images Right now we can see 577. Similarly for the others as well, we have added 500 as well. But the right way or the better way to do would be to add more images for the level which has very less representation and to add less images for the one which has more representation. So next thing, we are again training our model here we are creating the data set, training data and validation data. And here we are creating the model. Basically, it's a very simple model. Just what we did for this case study is to do some augmentation. Next is training our model here. Again, I have taken just 30 epochs. You can take more if you have more computational resource available. So as you can see here, what we have to look for is the accuracy. So this is training accuracy and this is validation accuracy. As you can see, the training accuracy is very less as at the beginning and it's monotonically increasing. And uh, validation accuracy as well is increasing as you can see. And we are also checking the loss. The loss should decrease and the accuracy should increase. And visualization, wow, guys, can you see this? This is quite an improvement and it will improve even further if you use the right augmenter, how I was explaining that you add more images for the level with less information and add less images for the level which has already more information. So as you can see, nevertheless, we are getting quite good results here we are reaching almost uh, above 75% 70, for both training and validation accuracy and overfitting is gone. We are successfully able to mitigate the overfitting problem here. So that's the end of this case study. It was a very simple case study, but a good starting point for working with deep learning and neural networks so that's it for today guys hope you like this video if you like it please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel you may also like to share it with your friends or somebody who would be finding this helpful thanks for watching we'll meet again very very soon in the next video bye guys